Hello, you. This is just a quick video to update you on a Digo update that was pushed out and their new feature called Digo Outliners. In the Digo update, all you have to do to see it is you can go to your Digo extension, click on My Library, and for some of you, it will ask you if you want to use the new feature. Mine has already been converted, so I'm already in the new setup. If you ever feel lost, if anything, in Digo, if you click on your name and you click on Help, this Help section has a lot of different features for you and it will help you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to do whatever it is you need to do. You can also find some great videos online um, that will help you if there's anything that you need to do on Digo that you don't already know how to do. The update highlights include though that there are no more lists in Digo and now they use the feature called outliners which we'll get to in a bit. There's an update that eliminates distractions when revisiting a website and then it allows you to quickly search for annotated or unread items. So one of the things I want you to think about when you're working in Digo is that we want to work smarter, not harder in Digo. So I have a couple of suggestions for you before we get to the outliners. One of my suggestions is that you need to consider putting a works cited reference in the description of the websites or pictures you save. For instance, I have a website here that I would like to save. If I go ahead and go to Digo and click save like I have before, I can look that it has it here and in my description, I already have my uh, works cited created, so I'm going to paste in that works cited here so that I have it for the future. Then I can go ahead and look at, oh, those are the wrong tags. I can look at tags that I need to include, including environment, including um, maybe degradation, and maybe I want energy in my tags. And as usual, I'm going to share this to my 7th grade ELA group. Well, now when I save this in my Digo library, as soon as I refresh this, my resource is going to show up including my Works Cited page, which is going to be really beneficial to me. Another suggestion that I have for you is to use in-text citations in your post-it notes. So normally when you're using this, you might be using your highlighting tool. And we want to be really careful about things that we highlight to make sure that it's actually going to be useful. But let's say that I want to highlight this, and that's a really important quote. Well, there's not really anything I can do to add an in-text citation for that. But maybe what I want to do is I also want to add a post-it note. And I want to say something that's in my own words, something that I maybe want to paraphrase or summarize. Maybe I just want to say something like environmental degradation, degradation is an issue that everyone should be aware of. Well, if I'm using this article as a support of that, I can go ahead and I can give an in-text citation because I already have my work cited done. So this would be conserve energy future one because it's a website. And so I'll save that. And so I can continue making my annotations like I have before. It also works if you do it, if you're using something like Encyclopedia Britannica or any of the websites that have been shown to you that we know are credible and reliable, it works the same. A couple of tips here though is that when you save this in Digo, you really want to make sure that if you are in something like EBSCOhost that you use this permalink. I'm going to control C to copy this so that when I Digo this and I save it, I can actually click this link. And this link is to this um, URL up here, but I want it to be a link to that permalink. So I just copied and pasted that in there. Then it yeah, is automatically giving me a description, but I don't actually want that description. What I want is the citation. So if I click cite over here and I scroll down to MLA, it'll show me what my work cited citation is going to look like. And if I go back up to Digo, and I click save, then it's actually going to put that works cited straight in here. Again, I may have to look for um, that permalink and I may have to double check if I'm hopping in and out of my citation before I save anything, but I always wanna make sure that this link right here comes from that permalink. And so again, I have my works cited now, I'm gonna tag it, and so I've got that saved. Oops, I didn't save it. I didn't share it to my group. If you ever need to go back and change things, you just can click that edit button. So now it's shared to my ELA group. And again, now if I would like to highlight something, 
I can. And so I've got that. And maybe I would decide that I want to add a sticky note. And so I can go back again and look here at my annotation. And so my work cited, I'm going to give credit to Chip, who's his last name. So I would have maybe a paraphrase of some sort here. And then I'm going to give credit to Chip. And then this is telling me that this is on page 10. So I'm going to add page 10 and I'm going to save this. Okay. Well, now in Digo, again, I have two new things, both of which have a work cited that are here and both of which have some things that I've paraphrased and things that I've quoted. Please remember that as you're going through and you're doing this, that you want to annotate responsibly. We have had some students that have been getting a little bit carried away and remember these are shared resources. So one of the things that Digo does for you now is it eliminates distractions. And so if I wanted to go back to that causes and effects website that I was visiting, I can click open in web, or if I just click the title, what it's going to do is it's going to actually pull up a new version of my article in a distraction-free zone. My annotation tool is now right here where I can go through, I can edit and look at these different things, and I can use my annotation tool. So my highlighter, if I want to highlight something, I just select it now and it pulls up. I can change my highlighter color. I can add a comment. I can directly copy this. It's a really neat feature that allows you to do a lot of really cool things. So that's just one of the things that came out in the update that I wanted to make sure that you could see. When I'm done with all of that and I've finished all of my annotating, I can, oh, I'm actually going to go back. Um, you can actually look at documents now. You can sort really quickly for those documents that you've annotated and it'll only pull up those. And then if you have any that are unread that you've saved to go back and read later, if you click unread, which I don't have any there right now, it'll pull those up for you as well. Okay, so Digo Outliners. Digo Outliners is this really amazing new tool that I really want you to use for your research. So if you go to My Outliners up at the very top where you see My Library, My Outliners, My Groups, you can see that I've already built several, one of which Digo built for me. If I want to add a new one, I just click this green button. I will give it a title. So I'm just going to title this Environmental Outliner Example. And so what this does is it automatically pulls up this for me. And as you can see by this image in this presentation, an outline is just a general structure for what you're going to be doing. So a general outline is going to have a spot for an introduction. You're going to have a main claim, number one, a main claim, number two. Typically, there's going to be a main claim number three, and then a conclusion. And then inside your introduction, I can hit tab, and that's going to change the level of my outline. I know I'm going to have a thesis statement. I might have some way to hook my readers, and underneath my main claims, I know that I'm going to need evidence. I know that I'm going to need reasoning. Um, so I might have that on each of these things. Well, what Digo does for you now is if you click this button right up here, it literally pulls open your Digo library. And so if I want to add evidence in my main claim one, maybe in this first claim, there's some really good evidence in this Don't Constrain Energy article. Well, if I go over here and I click this little arrow, it immediately pushes that article into my Digo outliner. If I hover over it, then it's going to give me the opportunity to add things into my outliner. So this little area arrow pushes whatever I want into my outliner. So I clicked both of those and now you can see that my works cited spot is there and the quote that I pulled is there. Well, if those things are both now in my outliner, then I can do things like add my in-text citation. So now I know that this came from Chip and I believe that was page 10. 
that we were looking at before. And so I can add that. Well, now if I decide that I need to reorganize things, I can actually click on this bullet point and maybe I decide that it belongs better in my main claim to evidence. And all I'm using to move these things around are the tab button. Shift tab will move back a, a bullet point that you have. And then if I want to, I can now also take my works cited, which is right here. I hit control X and I move that to its own bullet point. So I copied and pasted it. I can also add a bullet in my outline for a works cited. And everything that I use, I can now drag my work cited and put it in my outline. So let me give you another example. I'm going to go back here and maybe this article right here is another one that I want to use. So I can go to my outline. This is my evidence. And I'm going to put this causes and effects article in. Again, and I can exit out of this when I'm done with it. I can look at this. It automatically shows me that I have one annotation. When I hover over this, it'll pull up exactly what's here. And so if I hit this convert button, it pulls everything that was there into my outline. Again, if I have something that I've quoted that maybe I haven't added an in-text citation to, I would want to go ahead and add that to my outline. And then again, this can be moved anywhere I want it to be moved. It can stay with this. And now that I've included that, I'm going to control X, find a new bullet point, control V. And then I am going to move this down into my works cited. So I'm building my works cited as I am building my outline. This is going to help a lot of you to add your own thoughts and keep your writing balanced. So as we're going through, if I want to think or write something really specific, I can add my own thoughts anywhere in the outline that I want to. I have my evidence right here, which is ready for me to use, which is fantastic. And I can really keep myself organized by pulling all of my research into one place. That's it for today. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And as always, please let us know if there's anything else that we can be doing.